Hey there, and welcome to the Fusion 360 What's New for Design and Engineering video for July 2022. This release is our annual quality of life improvement run with huge changes across the entire product and some new features that we're really excited about. Let's check it out. Let's jump on into the design workspace to get us started. First, you'll notice a new command in the toolbar. The new tool is called Automated Modeling. Automated modeling is a new concept in cloud-powered geometry creation similar to generative design. What makes automated modeling so different is that the performance metrics like those needed for generative design aren't a part of the process. Instead, automated modeling creates geometry between surfaces to help a designer imagine new forms. Since there's no performance criteria involved, these shapes are meant to be used as inspiration for further design refinement. You might use the results as starting shapes for generative, as a jumping off point for creating your own design, or as end use geometry that you simulate and validate downstream. All the work is done in the cloud and the shapes are returned in just a couple of minutes. There's no cloud credit or token cost to use the tool and it's included in the base Fusion 360 subscription, so no extensions are required either. The workflow for using the tool looks something like this. Step one, Specify what areas of the design need to be connected together. These are the faces where the new geometry will connect and grow from. Keep in mind you might need to do some work like splitting faces to get the best result. Step 2. Specify any bodies to avoid. These are the areas where the new geometry isn't allowed to go. These are like obstacles in the generative workspace. Note that you can use these for aesthetic purposes or functional ones. Step 3. Specify whether you're looking for a new body or a new component to be created. And step four, generate shapes. And that's it. No loads, no constraints, no manufacturing methods, no optimization criteria. Just simple geometric input. Once that generate shapes button is pressed, the model is handed off to the cloud for processing. As of today, you'll get three different result types with two different interface regions. That's a total of six possible outcomes. The two interface region behaviors are a crisp interface or an organic one. The crisp interface essentially offsets the faces to join into new solids, where the organic result provides a T-spline shape that wraps around the face instead. You can preview all six of the results in Canvas, and when you've selected the outcome you like the best, you simply hit OK and the body or component is brought into your model. Notice how the shapes created are built using T-splines. So editing these shapes is the same as editing a generative design result or any other T-spline. Also note that symmetry is automatic, so long as your setup is truly symmetric. Automated modeling lives in the timeline as a command, so it's easy to revisit those results and change to a different outcome. There's a lot of detailed information, including how-to and best practices in the description below. We're putting together some deep dive videos as well, so stay tuned for those. Moving on, this release has some of the biggest performance improvements we've ever made to Fusion 360. We've sped up opening documents with complex sketches, lots of faces, and those with multiple gen or sim studies by as much as 750%. Changes to the sketch solver mean that geometry, constraints, and dimensions have all been sped up as well, with some operations getting a boost that makes them 300 times faster. Window selection of components got a boost, and Loft did as well. All in all, these improvements will make your day-to-day -day work with Fusion 360 noticeably faster and more stable. Next up in the design workspace, we're excited to announce the release of the Lofted Flange feature in Sheet Metal. The Lofted Flange tool allows a user to create transitions between different shapes that can then be unfolded into a flat pattern. The command operates similarly to the Solid Loft tool, but with Sheet Metal forming details like how the corners are generated. There are some things to keep in mind though. For starters, open and close profiles are supported, but not if they contain splines. Lines, arcs, circles, even ellipses are supported though. Tools like the slot command can also be used to specify one end of your shape. Another thing to note, the tool does not currently provide a rip function. So a manual feature to split the design is required if the resulting geometry is closed. We know this isn't ideal, but we wanted to get the tool in your hands to use as quickly as possible. That RIP functionality is on our to-do list, so stay tuned. 
Another change worth noting this time around is that the mesh face group visibility and component color cycling options have been slightly renamed. They function the same as they always have, but now they are named more closely to what they actually do. Lastly for modeling, we have some changes and new features for plastics and volumetric lattice tools in the product design extension. For snap fits, we now have rotation control. This can be global angle, individual angle per instance, or tied to a reference geometry. Another change here is that the selection tool for snap fits auto defaults to an automatic point selection scheme. This means that all the points on the sketch you're using will be selected automatically. To change this, like to exclude a point from your selection set, you just change the selection tool to manual. If you have only one sketch visible and want to manually select points, you'll need to clear the automatic selections first, then change to manual and select your points of interest. Another new plastic feature that's been added this release is the rest tool. This creates flat surfaces on curved sections of your design. You might use this to create flat areas for rubber feet to be installed, where a connector like USB might be located, or even to create cavities for buttons to sit in. The command just needs a profile and a plane reference to work from. All the same plastic rules apply, and so features like draft and wall thickness are automatically driven. For volumetric lattice, we're excited to announce new lattice cell options including a custom cell type. This enables the use of novel cell geometry to create your own lattices. This can be solids, surfaces, sketch geometry, or even meshes. By allowing custom cell types from any source of geometry, the floodgates are now open with design freedom. Changing over to the generative workspace, we have a few changes to talk about here as well. To start us out, during the explore phase of your generative workflows, you can now sort by generative model. For generative fluids, we have some changes to our function names. Preserves, obstacles, starting shapes, and offset obstacles are all being renamed to be more in line with their function. Let's hop to drawings to look at the changes there. First up for drawings, Fusion 360 now supports fonts for title block attributes. If you enter the edit title block command, you will now see font as an option for each attribute. Now your drawing and title block can have the same custom font for uniformity. Speaking of title blocks, a new change prevents the title block and border from being drug around by mistake. Now, if you need to move the title block, you must use the move command from the toolbar. That about wraps it up for this release of Fusion 360. As always, there's a ton of new features on the manufacturing and electronic videos as well. This update has amazing quality of life improvements nearly everywhere, and there's much to talk about in one video. The What's New blog has a great way to catch all of those details in one place though, so be sure to check it out. Make sure you've subbed to the channel and hit the like button for us, and we'll catch you on the next one.